In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a fake HDR video effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. Now, before we jump into Adobe Premiere, it's really important that we get the right footage beforehand. So in order to do a HDR, a high dynamic range video, we need the bright part of the video and we need the dark part of the video. So the objective here is to try and get footage of all different areas of the frame. So we need the shadows, we need the midtones, and we need the highlights. So go ahead and mount your camera to a tripod or make sure it's static. And then just go ahead and film the bright part of the frame. So pull your exposure down, film that bright part, make a cut, and then we'll go ahead and expose it up for the shadows, film that darker part, and we'll cut. Now, it's really important that when you're doing this, there's no movement in the frame because if there's movement in the frame, then unfortunately it's not going to match between these two clips. And when we cut these together, the HDR effect won't work. So this is quite limited in what you can use this effect for. However, though, this is really awesome at landscapes and cityscapes. If you're filming something and there isn't too much movement, so there's not somebody walking across the middle of the frame, then this will work perfectly for you. So in my example, I was filming the London Eye at sunset and I exposed the bright part, which is the sky, the sunset. And then I exposed for the shadows, which was the garden in the foreground. And then I'm just going to stitch these two clips together in Premiere. So let's jump into Premiere and let's begin the editing process. So as you can see, we're inside of Adobe Premiere and this is the dark part and this is the bright part. So essentially we want to take all of this detail in the sky and place it into this footage. So this footage is probably the footage that I'd probably focus on. If I had to choose one of these two clips, I'd get rid of this one and I'd focus on this one because most of the frame is exposed correctly. It's just the sky has overexposed. So I'm gonna work on this one and then I'm going to steal parts of this frame to make this one look more exposed. As you can see, the clouds are completely overexposed here, but they are more correctly exposed here. So in order to do that, I'm just going to move the dark part over to the right and I'm just going to take the brighter part over to the left at the beginning. We'll keep this one on video layer one and then we'll drag the dark video onto video layer two. We'll go up into effect controls, video, opacity and select the free draw bezier tool. Now I'm just going to zoom out and I am just going to draw a mask around the exposed part of the frame. So I'm just going to focus on the sky like this. And let's see how that looks. That's okay. But as you can see, there is this harsh line and this is just too underexposed. So in order to fix that, I'm just going to drag this mask over to the left. So onto the trees like this. So somewhere around here, and then I'm just going to increase the mask feather all the way up to around let's go for 250 percent so when we play this back you can see we've got some overlay and unfortunately this clip isn't exactly perfect as you can see this lamppost isn't quite straight so we're first just going to fix that so let's just move this dark footage over to the left and line that back up again there you go that looks better although this tree where there's movement happening in both frames, obviously that movement is not going to match. So I need to get rid of that. So I'm just gonna go back into that mask and I'm just going to remove the mask from that part of the frame like this. And I'm just going to keep that mask on the outside of the eye because we're gonna get a bit of an overlap from the eye as well. There you go. So this is the part of the frame that we're focusing on. Now at the moment that doesn't look entirely realistic. So we're just going to pull the opacity down. So if we pull it to zero, that's nothing. If I pull it to 100, that's all the way there. So I'm just gonna select a number where we're starting to restore that highlight detail. So around 60, 50%, somewhere around here. And I think that looks great. Now the problem is though, because I had to move that clip and line it back up again, it's not quite framed up perfectly on the right. So I'm just going to select both of those layers or we'll right click We'll go nest, nest that. And I'm just going to zoom in on this layer to maybe 104. I can even pull that back to 103 and that looks great. So now we've got this HDR effect on our footage. So before we started with this overexposed highlight detail in the sky, now we've restored that with our HDR video 
And now we've got this really nice video footage and all parts of the frame are correctly exposed. So from here, you can now just move on into grading. So let's drop around the levels onto this nested sequence and we can just pop those shadows a little bit more so we can make those just a little bit more dark just so it's not as obvious and then just bring in those white input levels just a little bit more so this is before it looks great but it's a bit flat now that we've added levels in it's actually looking like this could be a real shot now this technique is really beneficial if you need to shoot in a high contrast environment like at sunset so if you're filming towards the bright sun anything in front of the camera will be underexposed so it's really great in those instances, but it's also really great if you've got a cheaper camera. So if you haven't got a high end cinema camera with great dynamic range. So if you've got a digital SLR camera for maybe just a few hundred pounds, it's not going to have the best dynamic range. So if you shoot in HDR, so if you shoot the bright parts and you shoot the dark parts and you merge them together, it's going to make it look like you have a much more expensive camera with a much higher dynamic range. And there you go. That is how you do this fake HDR effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you in the next video. See you there.